Greetings and welcome to this online version of worship at Our Savior Lutheran Church in Issaquah. Today is uh, the, the celebration of Holy Trinity, Holy Trinity Sunday, which is also the first Sunday of Pentecost. A day when we focus on the uh, historical doctrine that understands God as having three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Remember uh, to check your, uh, the service folder that came along with a link to this video, and if you, uh, it helps if you'll follow along in that as we go along, and look at those announcements carefully from the bulletin, from that bulletin you received. Before I begin, I want to have a few comments about the crisis around racial inequality and injustice that we are currently facing as a nation. As a predominantly white congregation located in a wealthy community, our social and economic interests and voices are well represented in the structure and power that controls our society. In other words, things are already running the way that we want them to run, or we know how to get a fair hearing when they are not. Our world right now does not need to hear more of the same from us. Our calling right now as brothers and sisters of Christ is one of deep listening. To stand with our brothers and sisters in the African American community who are suffering and tell us that their cries are not being heard. And to listen to what they have to say as best we can. Our only words right now are, what is your life like? I will try to understand, although I may need some help. And if I don't quite get it, I will go with you. I will stand by your side. So you do not have to speak up alone to the power structures that we have put into place. We want this country and the blessings that of living in it to work for everyone. God loves you and so do we. Our Savior Lutheran Church has a long history of service to those in need in Issaquah and in foreign lands. Today we are being called to be of service to those who are not so close but are not very far away either who need our help. The lessons for this morning come from the book of Genesis, the story of creation, where God re is referred to as a plural, as an us, working together inside God's own person, bringing th all things into being. And the gospel is from the end of Matthew, where Jesus invokes the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to bless the work of the disciples and to remind them that God, and Jesus says, I am with you always even to the end of the age. We have a guest preacher this morning, the presiding bishop of the ELCA, Elizabeth Eaton, who has produced a video sermon specifically for congregations to use across the country on this day. So I hope and pray that you find her message inspiring. And now we begin with this greeting. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all.
almighty creator and ever-living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith. Defend us in all adversity and bring us at last to your presence, where you live in endless joy and love. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together in one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with a seed in it. And so it was. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals on the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. 
God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit, and you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw that everything that he had made and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done. And he rested on the, on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, a lot has changed since last Trinity Sunday. Not just the COVID-19 pandemic under which we live, but also the killing of George Floyd, an unarmed, handcuffed black man by a white police officer in Minneapolis. Just a few weeks ago, we learned, many of us, of the, the shooting of Ahmaud Aubrey. But since that time, Breonna Taylor, Dejan Sean Reed, Tony McDade have also been killed. And how many others whose names are known only to their families and to God? Today is Trinity Sunday. It's a hard, it's a hard holiday for us to wrap our minds around. It's a difficult, a difficult concept. But we learn about the Trinity, particularly in today's first lesson from Genesis. In this beautiful song of creation, we hear in the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. And a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And God said, and creation began. Martin Luther put it this way. So also the Christian church agrees that in this description, there is indicated the mystery of the Holy Trinity. Father created through the Son, whom Moses called Word, and over this creative work brooded the Holy Spirit. Later, God says, let us make humankind in our image. This is the glorious relationship with God that spills out into all creation. God is not a lone ranger, and all of God shows up. All of God shows up, delighting in creation, caring for creation, weeping for creation redeeming creation. 
I confess that I do not fully understand or even have language to describe the mystery of the Trinity. Probably won't until I finish my baptismal vocation and stand in the presence of God. I can't explain how, but I can testify to the great Lutheran question, what does this mean? God is relationship within God and flowing from God. Creation is, not, is God's decision not to look after God's self, but focuses God's energies on creation. This Trinity, this God, this relationship is outward and overflowing. God is the one who does not grasp. As we hear in Philippians, let this same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as a thing to be grasped. Likewise, the Spirit is poured out on us all. Again, what does this mean? God is relationship within God, with the creation, with humankind, and among humankind. And since we are baptized into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, baptized into the Trinity, we are also part of this powerful, dynamic, living, giving, loving relationship with God, in God, with creation, with each other. We are inextricably woven together. No one is alone. No one is beyond the fierce, tender love of God. And God is not far off. God is present in creation, in each of us and in all of us. God is flesh and blood made visible in Jesus of Nazareth and in every human being. God is spirit, closer than our own breath. And this is how God as Trinity shows up today. God is creator. God created diversity beautiful, vital, alive. We must reject calls for colorblindness. That diminishes and washes out God's gift of diversity. We in the white majority can begin to see our siblings of color more clearly. We should be color amazed, recognizing the strength that comes with all our many colors. And God is creator made all of us in God's image. Let us make them in our image. That means all of us are a part of this relational triune God who did create all of humankind, each and every one and all of us together in God's image, all. And God is the word made flesh, our flesh, your flesh, my flesh, George Floyd's flesh. Jesus in his passion still suffers with those who suffer. The crucifixion of an unarmed handcuffed man lying face down on the street is the crucifixion and the passion of our Lord. The crucifixion of so many, too many black and brown people who live constantly with the violence of racism is the passion of our Lord. And God is spirit. The wind, the breath that moved over the face of the deep at creation, the breath of God that was breathed into the first earth creature, Adam. The breath of Jesus as he gave them the gift of the spirit. The breath crushed out of George Floyd. The breath of life God had given to him. And now church, we as the baptized, those of us baptized into the Trinity show up. We work for an end to violence. The violence of racism that kills bodies and maims souls. And we work for the end of violence brought about by lawlessness and also frustration masquerading in some cases as protest. In the fierce love of the Trinity, we do not deny 
anger. In the face of the reality and equity and equity of racial injustice, anger is appropriate, is appropriate. But we use our anger to bring about change. We put out fires set to stores, workplaces, churches, and property. But we ask that the, spy, the spirit kindle in us the fire of justice. We work for calm and quiet throughout our country. But we remain disquieted as we search deep within ourselves. We work for peace, but not the passive peace that allows the mechanisms of racism and white supremacy to stay in place. No, the peace God alone can give that gives us the strength and courage to act. The Trinity is a relationship within God, with creation, with us, and among us. Until the white majority feels in our soul that the pain and suffering of black and brown people is our own pain and suffering, it will not be safe to be black or brown in America. And until we feel in our own soul that this is our pain and our story, we are not open to the relationship that God wants to shower, share, lavish upon us as a relational God, a loving God, as a God of the Trinity, as a God who has brought us into that relationship and commands us to share that relationship and live that relationship with creation and with each other. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians ends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It's actually a promise and I think marching orders for us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is with us. The love of God is with us. The communion of the Holy Spirit is with us. And together, in the communion and community of the Holy Trinity. We can make that a reality. Amen.
We return thanks to God for all the blessings and joys that we receive through his gracious gifts. God of mercy and grace, the eyes of all wait upon you and you open your hand in blessing. Fill us with all good things that we may come to the help of all in need through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The prayers of the people. As our country has exceeded 100,000 deaths due to coronavirus, we pray for healing. God of healing, bring an end to this pandemic and all illness and disease. Bless those who stand in service to humanity. Bless those who grieve. Bless the dead so that their souls are bound up in the bond of life eternal. And grant those still afflicted with disease or trauma a completed and lasting healing. One by one, until suffering ceases, and we can stop counting the dead in heaven and on earth. A prayer for power of the Spirit among the people of God. God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world a prayer, a people of who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest and grow in the spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission that we and the whole creation might be restored, renewed and renewed through Jesus Christ our Lord. In this time of civic mourning, God our creator, through whose providing care we enjoy all goodness in life, turn our eyes to your mercy in this time of confusion and loss. Help us to see one another as your children. Comfort this nation as we mourn the dead and the great divisions in our country. Guide us to bring love and healing to our communities. Give assurance to those who are anxious. Grant strength to those who are tired. Shine your love on those whose only companion is hate. Teach us your wisdom and way of justice, love, grace, and peace. We renounce white supremacy, and we must help bring about social justice. Grant, O oh God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may move every human heart, that the barriers dividing us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease, and that, with our divisions healed, we might live in justice and peace, through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. We pray for all who are in need of healing and strength. We pray for those who are facing ongoing challenges and health concerns. Lyle, Bodil, Perrin, Mike, Marilyn, Linda, Dave, Kip, Evie, Emily, Mike, Anthony, guests of the Community Meals Program, Sonia, Nicole, Josie, and Jeannie. Amen, amen, amen. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So in this service, we are saying uh, goodbye and farewell to um, two longtime members of our congregation, Mark and uh, Tammy Crone, who unfortunately um, are moving away and won't be able to participate in our congregation going forward. Mark and Tammy have been members of the congregation for 30 years. They came here in 1990. Um, much of what we see on the grounds around this building they are responsible for, the upkeep and even getting it started. Um, uh, Mark has been on the church council for 10 years over that time period. And when he left, uh, Tammy came on, but she can't stay here for her full term. <laughs> Seems a little unfair, but we'll, <laughs> we'll have to get along without you. But Tammy's been very active also in the quilt ministry, very active with that. They raised their two children here. And their son, Mikey, was the first baptism that Pastor Larry Thomas performed when he arrived here uh, that long ago. I guess it was right in 1990. Mm -hmm. Wow, okay. So we're going to miss you. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing and where you're going? Well, we are heading over to Boise to uh, be close to uh, Mikey, our youngest, and his two children now, so we have grandchildren. Um, and part of that reason is both of us uh, were not close to our parents in location. And so our kids only saw them a couple times a year. And early on in our parenthood, we thought that that was sad and uh, decided a long time ago that when it came time to raise our own grandkids, we wanted to have a more active role and be closer. Uh, Sunday dinner close. Oh, wonderful. And so that's, that's it's time, and that's what we're doing, and uh, that's why. I guess the pull of grandkids is stronger than uh, the landscaping pull. We apologize for that. <laughs> yeah. And I hear you're going to take your tractor with you, too. I am. I am taking my tractor and mower, yep. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. I'll take my toys and run. <laughs> uh, okay, well, you're certainly going to be deeply missed here. Thank you for your years of ministry and the, and the building up of this congregation. The foundations of this very place are um, built on your uh, contribution, so thank you. Thank you. thank you. Yeah. So we begin, the Lord be with you and also with you. Mark and Tammy, as you leave our community of faith, we wish to bid you farewell. A reading from Exodus. The Lord said, I am going to send an angel in front of you to guard you on the way and to bring you to the place I have prepared. And Jesus says in John, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will always be, will always have the light of life. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the work and witness of your servants, Mark and Tammy, who have enriched this community and shared their gifts with friends and colleagues. Now bless and preserve them at this time of transition. Day by day, guide them and give them what is needed, friends to cheer their way, a clear vision of that to which you are calling them. By your Holy Spirit, be present in their pilgrimage, that they may travel with the one who is the way and the truth and the life. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you and direct your days in peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Normally we would have a crowd to give you a round of applause for all you've done. So thank you for being there. I think one hand clapping would okay. sound a little strange. But <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And now we go forth with God's blessing. May God the sower make you good and fertile soil. May Christ the seed bloom and grow in your words and actions. May the fruitful spirit bring forth a bountiful yield in your lives. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. 
Amen.